morning and welcome to our worship this morning as we travel the next leg of our Lenten faith journey. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Remembering Abraham and Sarah, we, we gather to worship the Lord. We continue our own journey of faith. God's holy name be praised. We journey in the presence of God. And we do not journey alone. We pray together the collect for the second Sunday in Lent. God of amazing compassion and lover of our wayward race, you call us to be a blessing for all the world. Keep us on this holy path, confident in the radiant life you offer through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5 and 13 to 17. 
What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence things that do not exist. Hear the word of the Lord. Father, as we come to hear your word and to reflect on your word, may you speak to us in ways that are important for each one of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading from Romans talks about faith and works. And As I was reading that reading, for some reason, I was reminded of a song. I don't know if you remember it. I did it my way. Do you remember I did it my way? I did it my way. And he sings, I stood tall and I did not kneel. I did it my way. 
And I think today's passage challenges that view that it is all up to what we do. It's all up to our works. It challenges that view, the view that we are only acceptable to God because of what we do. But somehow, we have to do enough to earn God's love and God's grace. And we hold on to this view with such tenacity. Probably because we live in a culture that values individuals. And it values individual achievement. When people achieve things, we see that as an indication of their worth. We find it very difficult to ascribe worth to someone who has achieved nothing. And so we venerate people like Bill Gates because they seem to have achieved so much and overcome so many obstacles. We venerate people like Albert Einstein, even though, well, I suppose he achieved great things in spite of the fact that he couldn't talk until he was nine years of age and he was expelled from school. So it seems remarkable that he's achieved so much. And then we take the sense of work, hard work, and achievement into our spiritual lives. And so we come into our spiritual lives wanting to please the boss, wanting the boss to notice us, wanting the boss to say, well done, I could not have done this without you. But in the spiritual world, the boss is already pleased with us. There's nothing you can do to earn his pleasure, his delight, and his love. Because he created you. And so there's no point in trying to make the boss, God, like you. Because he already adores you and loves you deeply. And he notices you all day and every day. He knows your heart. He knows what's going on inside of you. He knows your desires and your fears. And he will say, I could not have done this without you. But he will hope that we understand that we could not have done it without him either. And so our story is not the story of individuals who have done it their way. If I had done it my way, I wouldn't be standing here today. And I suppose that many people who are doing things in the world as a work of God would probably not have chosen that work if they had done it their way. Our story is really God's story. And our story is found within God's story. We could not or should not say, I did it my way, but rather, I did it God's way. Or, we did it God's way. We need to step away from the I and embrace the we. We don't do things alone. Because the minute we embrace the we, we have a much greater sense of reality. Because actually it's a falsehood to say I did it my way. Because we never do anything alone. We are always assisted by others. Those who taught us, those who encourage us, those who love us, those who walk beside us. And it is God who gives us the capacity to do what we do. It's God who gives us the wisdom, the courage, and the strength. It's God who gives us the faith 
to walk on his path. And it's God who calls us to follow him. Imagine if Peter had said as he began to found the church, guess what guys, I did this my way. That would sound strange. No, he did it God's way. And we do it God's way. So it's good to ask God to share with us his story. What is his story for this community? What is his story for the communities to which we belong? What does God want us to achieve in the spaces in which we serve? And we know that God's story is not the story of our personal happiness. It's not the story of our financial security. It's a different story. And we know what that story is. It's the story in which people are drawn into relationship and faith. It's a story in which people experience his love and his grace. And if that's God's story, then it's our story. And we must be sure that our story is in line with God's story. We must found ourselves in God's story. And so put your energy into not your story, not your way, but God's story. Love him, love others and serve others. Put your faith in that story because it's that that draws you closer to God. So I'll leave you with a question. How much of what you do is about your story or God's story? Amen. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that through him the world might be saved. Let us keep a moment of silence as we confess our sin to God. And so we pray together. God of Abraham and Sarah, forgive us for the times when we have loved our comfort too much, when we have ignored your voice of command, when we have been afraid of the risks of the journey. We repent and pray from now on. We will follow the call of your Spirit and follow you willingly into new territory in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, we thank you so much that we don't have to do 
the work of salvation. We give you thanks and praise that Jesus came because you loved us. And you did the work of salvation for us your way. But Lord, we confess that very often we are afraid of your way. We feel as if we are more in control if we can do it our way. But we need you, Lord. We need you in this world. We need you perhaps as much as the world has ever needed your way. And so we bring to you the needs of the world. As we come into heaven's space this morning, we bring the needs of our world. Our world that is trying so hard to do it the world's way and failing dismally in so many areas. We pray for our country, South Africa, and for the many, many issues that face our people right now. The poverty, the lack of power, shortages of water, crime, all the struggles that we face because we are trying to do things our own way. And so we pray for your Holy Spirit during this Lenten time to descend in a new way upon our land and upon the leaders of our land. We hold them before you, Lord, and ask you to change them because we cannot. We pray also for the leadership of our church. We pray for our Metropolitan Tabo and our Bishop Kosanati. And we hold up to you also Makosi as she begins her ministry in this parish that you would give them the courage to go your way even though at times it is a hard road and difficult decisions need to be made. And then we pray for ourselves and for those we love, those who are in pain, those who are struggling. We hold them before you, Lord, in our hearts. Each one of us knows someone who is struggling. We hold them before you, Lord, and we ask for your healing, for your strength, for your power, for your spirit, for each of those we love. And these prayers we lay before you in the name of Jesus, who came so that we might be saved. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is ever turned towards your world. In love you created us in your own image, yet in disobedience we continue to distort that image. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Yet, in disobedience, we continue to try to earn our salvation. In love, you poured out your Spirit to empower a community of faith. Yet, in disobedience, we continue to live selfishly in our own strength. Into the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. He accepted the way of the cross, that we might know the way of salvation. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. We do not always understand your gifts. We do not always accept them. We cannot always appreciate them. As we stand at the foot of the cross today, we can only wonder at the depth of your love and bow down and worship. He accepted the way of the cross that, that we might know the way of salvation. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. In Gethsemane he asked that you might take this cup from him, yet willingly he surrendered to your will for our sake. He accepted the way of the cross, that, that we might know the way of salvation. On the night that he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine he took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. He accepted the way of the cross that, that we might know the way, way of salvation. salvation. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and for all the world. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with eyes wide open and hearts on fire. He accepted the way of the cross, that, that we might know the way of salvation. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray.
break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Sisters and brothers in Christ, draw near and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which were given for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this Thy table, O merciful Lord Trusting in our own righteousness But in Thy manifold and great mercy Gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord. Son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may ever dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy is gracious. As we seek now to continue our journey of faith and to follow God, God's way, we pray, Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love and pray for, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.